Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 41 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture, I discussed with you interval estimation and hypothesis testing regarding mu1 minus mu2 based on the t statistic and the t distribution and that situation was valid when the populations were normal, the standard deviations of the populations were unknown but equal and the sample sizes were small. Towards the end of the last lecture, I began the discussion of the application of the t-distribution in the case of paired observations. Let us continue that discussion and let us go back to the example that I quoted at the end of the last lecture. As you now see on the screen, 10 young recruits were put through a strenuous physical training program by the army. Their weights were recorded before and after the training with the following results. For recruit number one, the weight before the training was 125 pounds, whereas after the training it was 136 pounds. Similarly, we have the figures for all the other recruits. Using a level of significance of 5%, would you say that the program affects the average weight of the recruits? Assume the distribution of weights before and after the training to be approximately normal. Students, as I mentioned last time, this is a case of pairing and we can say that this is natural pairing. के वो जो recruits हैं पहले आपने उनका वजन पहले भी किया हुआ है और उसके बाद training के बाद आपने दोबारा से उनका वजन किया and we are interested in finding out के आया इस training की वजह से उनके वजन पे कोई फर्क पड़ता है या नहीं पड़ता as I was saying last time students the statistic in this particular case is t equal to d bar minus mu d over SD over square root of N. Yani, bilkul wohi formula jo pehli martaba mu ki testing ke vakt tha savais ke ke ab hum x ki vijay d ki baat kar rahe. To aye is point ko zara tafseel ke saath consider karte hain. Sab se pehli cheez hai d. We are going to compute the differences in the weights before and after the training. So, as you now see on the screen, if we regard the weights after the training as x1, the weights before the training as x2, and we define d as x1 minus x2, then the 10 differences come out to be 136 minus 125 equal to 11, 201 minus 195 equal to 6, 158 minus 160 equal to minus 2 and so on. Students, ye jo thus differences I hain, you should regard them as a sample of differences out of a population of differences. Ye bada interesting idea malum hota hai. Dekhe, agar humare paas 10 recruits na hote, 10,000 hote, thousands and thousands of recruits hote, puri population hoti or theoretically hum ye keh sakte hain ki agar humne unme se har ek ko is physical training mein se guzara hota and we had recorded the weights before the training and after the training for all of them, then we could have found differences of this type for all of them and that would be a large population of differences. These 10 differences can be regarded as a random sample out of that population. Students, another very, very important point to note is that if both x1 and x2 are normally distributed, then the difference d, which is x1 minus x2, that will also be normally distributed. This is because of a basic mathematical property of the normal distribution and the property says 
that if x and y are normally distributed, then x plus y or x minus y will also be normally distributed. So, aap x, y kahin ya x1, x2 kahin. Point ye hai ke agar wo do variables normally distributed honge, to unka jo difference hai na, this new variable is also normally distributed. In this problem, x1 is the weight after the training, x2 is the weight before the training. So, weight to parhal approximately normally distributed hota hi hai. Therefore, we can say that this population of differences x1 minus x2 is also normally distributed. Ye baat bahut important hai. Is liye ke agar parent population normal ho, uska standard deviation unknown ho, or sample size small ho, tab hi to hum t statistic apply karte hai na. To yahan pe this is what is happening. We are assuming that we have a random sample of differences from a normally distributed population of differences. And of course, the standard deviation of the population, which I may call sigma d, is unknown. Or jo hamara sample size hai, wo bhi aapne dekha is problem mein, it is small. And we had only a sample of 10 recruits. So, all those assumptions and conditions are being fulfilled. And this is why, in this particular case, we will be applying the t statistic, which you now see on the screen. t is equal to d bar minus mu d over s t over square root of n. As I have said two or three times, this is similar to the statistic that we had earlier, which was t is equal to x bar minus mu over s over square root of n. Ye jo statistic humne pehle istemal kiya tha. Agar mein chahti, to mein isko is tarah se bhi pad sakti thi. t is equal to x bar minus mu x over s x over square root of n. And if you replace x by d, then you get the one that we have now. Students, dekha aapne, pehla jo statistic tha aur ab jo hai, actually they are one and the same. Sirif itni baat ke pehle hum x variable ki baat kar rahe the, aur ab humara variable d hai. Aapne dekha ke mene kaha ke aap s x lik sakte the, mu x lik sakte the. There is uh, nothing wrong with that. That is absolutely correct. Kyunke us vakt, jab hum x variable ke hawale se sari baatein kar rahe the, to hum mu or s jo compute karte the, hum uske saath ye subscript x lagate nahi the. Lekin agar hum lagate, to it would have been all the more correct. After all, mu jo tha, that was the mean of the population of the x values. And so, there was nothing wrong with saying mu x. Similarly, Sx would have been the standard deviation, sample standard deviation of the x values that we had taken in the form of a sample from that population. So, baat phir wohi students ke aap basic pattern ko dekhye aur dekhye ke wohi baat repeat ho rahi hai jo pehle ho rahi thi. All right, now that we have the statistic in mind, I think we should go to the six steps that we have in any hypothesis testing procedure step by step according uh, to a methodical approach. The first step of course is the formulation of the null hypothesis and the alternative. And what is the null hypothesis in this particular example? Students, hum ye jana chaate thi na, ki ye jo physical training program hai, iska weight pe koi asar padta hai ya nahi? to nal kya hoga yahi hona chahiye na that there is no difference in the weight before the training and after the training yani us program se koi fark nahi padta as far as the weight is concerned and what will be the alternative that it does make a difference so the alternative says that mu1 is not equal to mu2 in this case one is standing for the weight after the training 
टू इज स्टैंडिंग फॉर द वेट बिफोर द ट्रेनिंग एंड वट वी सेंग इज के वो बराबर नहीं है इसका मतलब कि कुछ फ़र्क पड़ जाता है हो सकता है कम हो जाता हो हो सकता है ज़्यादा हो जाता हो फ़र्क पड़ रहा है अब स्टूडेंट्स इसी बात को हम इस तरह से भी तो कह सकते हैं ना कि नाल हिपोथिस ये है कि म्यू वन माइनस म्यू टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड दी ऑल्टरनेटिव इज दैट म्यू वन माइनस म्यू टू इज नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन म्यू वन माइनस म्यू टू इज इक्वल टू एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स वन माइनस एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स टू इसलिए कि एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू का मतलब ही मीन होता है एंड दिस कैन बी रिटर्न एज एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स वन माइनस एक्स टू इसलिए कि ये तो बेसिक एल्जेब्रेक इक्वेजन है दैट ई ऑफ एक्स माइनस वाई इज इक्वल टू ई ऑफ एक्स माइनस ई ऑफ वाई सो म्यू वन माइनस म्यू टू इक्वल टू जीरो मीन्स एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स वन माइनस एक्स टू इक्वल टू जीरो और इन अदर वर्ड्स एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ डी इक्वल टू जीरो और इन अदर वर्ड्स म्यू डी इक्वल टू जीरो एंड स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज एग्जैक्टली आवर नाल हिपोथिस इन टर्म्स ऑफ द वेरिएबल डी एच नॉट म्यू डी इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड एच वन म्यू डी इज नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज द लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस एंड As you now see on the screen, in this problem, we set it to be the usual level, 0.05. The test statistic under H naught, as mentioned earlier, is t is equal to d bar minus mu d over s t over square root of n. But since our null hypothesis says that mu d is equal to zero, therefore t can be written as simply d bar over s t over square root of n now it can be mathematically proved that this particular statistic follows the t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom exactly similar to what we had when we were considering the variable x and testing for the mean of that variable the fourth step is the computation of the statistic and as you now see on the slide in order to find t we first have to find sd and to find sd we need to have a column of d square which you see in the last column of the table that you have in front of you now the d square values are 121 36 4 169 and so on substituting the sum of this column and the sum of the earlier column in the formula of sd square we obtain sd square equal to 50.23 so that sd comes out to be 7.09 of course d bar is very easily found by simply dividing the sum of the d column 47 by 10 and that comes out to be 4.7 hence the computed value of our test statistic in this problem comes out to be 2.09 students obviously we would like to compare this value with the critical value and what is the situation now is it a one tailed or a two tailed test of course it is a two tailed test इसलिए कि हमारा ऑल्टरनेटिव अपॉथिस ये था दैट म्यू डी इज़ नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो आइदर म्यू डी इज़ लेस दैन जीरो और म्यू डी इज़ ग्रेटर दैन जीरो और चूँकि लेस और ग्रेटर दोनों साइन इन्वॉल्व हो गए इसलिए बोथ द टेल्स ऑफ आवर टी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आर इन्वॉल्व एंड देर फोर वी विल हैव टू डिवाइड आवर लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस फाइव परसेंट बाई टू हाफ ऑफ इट इन द लेफ्ट टेल half in the right so we will have 2.5% area to the right of the critical value that we will have on the right tail and 2.5% area to the left of the critical value that we will have on the left tail now how do you find the critical value degrees of freedom n minus 1 hai 
हमारे पास टेन रिक्रूट्स थे तो टेन माइनस वन मीन्स नाइन एंड सो वेन वी लुक इन द टी टेबल अगेंस्ट नाइन डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम अंडर जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू फाइव वॉट डू वी गेट एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्लाइड द क्रिटिकल वैल्यूज कम आउट टू बी टू पॉइंट टू सिक्स टू एंड माइनस टू पॉइंट टू सिक्स टू अच्छा यहाँ पे एक इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट है देखिए आप कहेंगे कि ठीक है दस रिक्रूट्स थे लेकिन अगर हम अलग अलग देखें तो दस वैल्यूज़ हैं वेट बिफोर द ट्रेनिंग की दस वैल्यूज़ हैं वेट आफ्टर द ट्रेनिंग की तो अगर हम उस हिसाब से चलें जिस तरह हम लास्ट टाइम चल रहे थे तो इन ऑर्डर टू टेस्ट म्यू वन इक्वल टू म्यू टू तो आपको याद है कि डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम उस वक्त थी एन वन प्लस एन टू माइनस टू तो उस हिसाब से शायद आप कहें कि हमें करना चाहिए टेन प्लस टेन माइनस टू टेन बिफोर द ट्रेनिंग टेन आफ्टर द ट्रेनिंग वैल्यूज तो हो गई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी माइनस टू एटीन वाई डिड आई नॉट यूज एटीन डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम स्टूडेंट्स द रीजन इज एज आई एक्सप्लेन अर्लियर अब आप इसको एक पॉपुलेशन ऑफ डीज यानी डिफ्रेंसेज तस्वर करें और ये समझें कि इस पॉपुलेशन में से यू हैव ड्रॉन वन सैम्पल ऑफ साइज टेन इन दिस केस अ सैम्पल ऑफ डीज ये दो अलग अलग सैम्पल जिसके लिए हम कहें कि एन वन प्लस एन टू माइनस टू ये उस तरह की सिचुएशन नहीं है दिस इज द केस ऑफ पेड ऑब्जर्वेशन जहाँ पे हम इसको इस दूसरे तरीके से ट्रीट करते हैं जैसा कि मैं आप उसके साथ बात कर रही और राइट वट इज द लास्ट स्टेप द कंक्लूजन आवर कंप्यूटेड वैल्यू ऑफ टी के माउ टू बी टू पॉइंट जीरो नाइन एंड द क्रिटिकल वैल्यूज आर प्लस माइनस टू पॉइंट टू सिक्स टू इसलिए साफ जाहिर है कि हमारी वैल्यू एक्सेप्टेंस रीजन के अंदर फॉल कर रही एंड दे फोर वी कैन एक्सेप्ट एच नॉट इसका मतलब ये हुआ दैट दिस डेटा डज नॉट प्रोवाइड एविडेंस टू कंक्लूड दैट दिस पर्टिकुलर फिजिकल ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम अफेक्ट्स द वेट्स ऑफ दोज रिक्रूट्स ऑफकोर्स वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग फ्रॉ अबाउट एनी पर्टिकुलर इंडिविजुअल बट वी आर टॉकिंग ऑन द एवरेज लेट इज कंसिडर वन मोर एग्जाम्पल ऑन पेड ऑब्जर्वेशन एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्लाइड The following data give paired yields of two varieties of wheat. Each pair was planted in a different locality. The values are that for locality number one, the yield for variety one is forty-five, whereas the yield for variety two is forty-seven. Similarly, for locality number two. The yield of variety one is thirty-two, and the yield of variety two is thirty-four. इसी तरह से हमारे पास बाकी figures मौजूद हैं. Now we would like to test the hypothesis that, on the average, the yield of variety one is less than the yield of variety two. Also, in this problem, we are required to state the assumptions. that are necessary to carry out the test that we are going to carry out in addition there is a very interesting question how can the experimenter make a type one error and what are the consequences of his doing so next isi tarah se hum ye bhi janna chahte hain ke how can the experimenter make a type two error and what are the consequences of his doing so in addition we would like to compute the 90% confidence interval for the difference in the mean yield of the two varieties students sabse pehle aap ye note kare that this is again a case of paired observations hamare paas 10 mukhtalif farms hain aur har farm mein humne आधे में वैरायटी वन को बोया है और आधे में 
वैरायटी टू को इसलिए सॉइल इज कॉमन और अब अगर पैदावार में कोई फर्क आयर आ रहा है तो इट इज नॉट बिकॉज ऑफ सॉइल और एनी अदर एक्सट्रेनियस फैक्टर्स विच कुड अफेक्ट द यील्ड इट इज सिंपली द डिफरेंस इन द वराइटीज दैट इज प्रोड्यूसिंग द डिफरेंस इन द यील्ड एंड दिस इज एग्जैक्टली वॉट वी आर वॉन्टिंग टू मेजर so if we are satisfied that this is the way we should treat this problem then what are the assumptions in order to conduct the test as you now see on the screen we will be assuming that the differences in the yields of the two varieties in the 10 farms that we have these are a random sample from the population of differences and the population of differences is normally distributed iska yahi matlab hua ke hum soch sakte hain ke agar hum 10 ki bajaye 100 1000 10000 farms ki baat kare har farm mein aadhe mein variety 1 aadhe mein variety 2 ko hum bo de to hamare paas ek population of yields for variety 1 as well as for variety 2 हमारे पास ये आ जाएगी और उसके बाद अगर हम डिफरेंसेस कंप्यूट कर लें देन वी हैव अ पॉपुलेशन ऑफ डिफरेंसेस इस पॉपुलेशन में से वी आर ड्राइंग अ रैंडम सैम्पल ऑफ साइज टेन और राइट स्टूडेंट्स व्हाट इज इट दैट वी आर वांटिंग टू टेस्ट स्टेटमेंट ये थी कि वैरायटी वन की हील जो है ऑन द एवरेज इट इज लेस देन वराइटी टू ये हम टेस्ट करना चाहते हैं देखिए इसके अंदर लेस देन का साइन है इक्वल का साइन इसमें नहीं आता इसका मतलब है कि दिस विल बी इन दी ऑल्टरनेटिव हिपोथेसिस। अगर हम वैरायटी वन के लिए सब्सक्रिप्ट वन यूज करें और वैरायटी टू के लिए सब्सक्रिप्ट टू देन व्हाट आर वी सेइंग? वी वी आर सेइंग म्यू वन इज लेस देन म्यू टू दिस कम्स इन दी ऑल्टरनेटिव हिपोथिस एंड वॉट इज दी नल हिपोथिस देन म्यू वन इज ग्रेटर दैन और इक्वल टू म्यू टू लेकिन अगर हम इन हिपोथिस को ट्रांसलेट करें इन टू दोज विच आर इन टर्म्स ऑफ डी देन एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द नाल हिपोथिस इज म्यू डी इज ग्रेटर दैन और इक्वल टू जीरो एंड द ऑल्टरनेटिव म्यू डी इज लेस दैन जीरो द सेकेंड स्टेप इज द लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस एंड लेट एस कीप इट एज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव the usual level that we take the third step is the test statistic t is equal to d bar minus mu d over sd over square root of n and the fourth step is to compute this statistic carrying out the computations just as in the last example our d bar comes out to be minus 2.8 sd square is equal to 1.7333 so that t comes out to be minus 6.71 now the critical region lies on the left tail of the distribution and looking under 0.05 in the t table against 9 degrees of freedom the value is 1.833 but because we have the left tail in our mind therefore we say that the critical value is minus 1.833 the last step of course is the conclusion our value is minus 6.71 which is far out in the left tail and therefore we reject the null hypothesis and therefore we conclude that there is sufficient evidence for us to say that mu1 is less than mu2 yani variety 1 ki yield jo hai on the average it is less than the yield of variety 2 students you will recall that there was a very interesting question in this problem how can the experimenter make a type one error and what will be the consequences of his doing so aapko yaad hai na type one error ka matlab hai that h not is actually true but you reject it is problem mein h not kya tha mu1 is greater than or equal to mu2 yani mu1 the mean yield of the first variety is either more than or at least equal to 
the yield of variety 2. So, if this is true and we reject it and we say that the yield of variety 1 is less than the yield of variety 2, what will be the consequences of this error? Students, first say that variety 1 is less expensive than variety 2. और हम कहें कि जी एक्सपेंसिव तो कम है लेकिन उसकी हील्ड भी कम है लिहाजा वी शुड नॉट टेक दैट वन वी शुड बी बाइंग द अदर वन एंड सोइंग द अदर वन बट देन स्टूडेंट्स विल वी नॉट बी वेस्टिंग मनी इसलिए कि दरअसल तो उसकी हील्ड लेस नहीं है असल में तो एच नॉट इज ट्रू और अगर वो इनएक्सपेंसिव है तो फिर तो हमें वही लेनी चाहिए थी ना आप को मैं इनकरेज करूंगी कि इस मामले पे गौर कीजिए। This is how you link the mathematical theory with real life, and if you pay attention to it, it can be very interesting. The other question was, how can the experimenter make a type two error? Type two error क्या होता है? कि जो नल हिपोथेसिस है, that is actually false, but you accept it because of your data being that way. So, in this problem, the null hypothesis is that mu1 is greater than or equal to mu2. First, say that this is wrong. In the truth, mu1 is less than mu2. Variety 1's yield is less than variety 2's on the average. But if we accept H0, which is actually false, then we will say that variety 1's yield is less than variety 2's. वैरायटी टू से तो ऐसा करने से नुकसान क्या होगा ऐसा करने से नुकसान ये होगा स्टूडेंट्स कि हम जो इजाफा कर सकते थे पैदावार में बाय यूजिंग वैरायटी टू वो हम नहीं कर सकेंगे बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ दिस एरर दैट वी हैव कमिटेड सो दिस इज़ द काइंड ऑफ़ सिचुएशन दैट वी डील विद इन हिपोथेसिस � Construct a confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2, and how do we proceed with this problem? आपको याद है ना कि ये वाला problem तो paired observations का है, तो इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि जो हमारा confidence interval है, that also has to be in that manner, as you now see on the screen. In the case of paired observations. The confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2, in other words, the confidence interval for mu d is given by d bar plus minus t alpha by 2 n minus 1 degrees of freedom multiplied by s d over square root of n. Once again, note ki jay exactly the same formula that we had in the first instance when we were trying to construct a confidence interval for mu, the mean of our x variable. Uswa formula kya tha? x bar plus minus t alpha by 2 and minus 1 degrees of freedom into s over square root of n. Aur ye formula bilkul vaisa hi hai. The only difference being that our variable now is not x but d. So, let us apply this in this problem. As you now see on the screen, d bar is equal to minus 2.8, sd is 1.32 and n is equal to 10 and therefore, our confidence interval is minus 2.8 plus minus t alpha by 2 at 9 degrees of freedom into 1.32 over square root of 10. As noticed earlier the value of t alpha by 2 that is t 0 0.025 at 9 degrees of freedom. Ab ye jo t alpha by 2 ki baat ho rahi hai, students note ki jiye ke hum chaate hain ke hum 90% confidence interval nikaale. Iska matlab ye hua that 90% area in the middle, 5% to the left, 5% to the right. So, having a look at the area table of the t distribution, of course, 
the T value comes out to be 1.833 just as in the case of hypothesis testing that we did a short while ago. Therefore, putting the value 1.833 in the formula, our confidence interval comes out to be minus 3.565 to minus 2.035. And rounding these figures, the 90% confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2 is minus 3.6 to minus 2.0. As you can see, the values are negative and this means that mu1 is less than mu2. Zahir hai, agar mu1 mu2 se kam hoga, tab hi mu1 minus mu2 negative aega na. All right, students, we have conducted a number of tests and constructed a number of confidence intervals based on the T distribution. Humne mu ki baat ki, mu1 or mu2 ki baat ki, paired differences ki baat ki. Is se pehle, you will recall that we were testing about mu on the basis of the Z statistic. And also, when we were doing the Z statistic, we were testing about P1, P2, and also constructing confidence intervals regarding proportions. Another very uh, important quantity that we might wish to estimate is the variance or the standard deviation of our population. Agar hum sigma square ya sigma ke baare mein statistical inference karna chahe, then what will be the procedure? Students, you will be interested to know that there is another distribution called the chi-square distribution and this is the one that will enable us to do statistical inference for sigma square, the variance of the population. So, before I do the application of the chi-square distribution in real life situations, let me first define this distribution for you in a formal manner. As you now see on the slide, the mathematical equation of the chi-square distribution is f of x is equal to 1 over 2 raised to nu by 2 into the gamma function, gamma of nu by 2 and this whole quantity multiplied by x raised to nu by 2 minus 1 multiplied by e raised to minus x by 2 and this whole equation is valid for x lying between 0 and infinity. Ji haan, aap phir se wohi baat keh rahe na, that it's a very complicated equation. All I would like you to do is to note that it has only one parameter represented by nu and also note that x ranges from 0 to infinity or iski jo properties hain, wo hum iske baad discuss karte hain, one by one. Let us have a look at the equation one more time. f of x is equal to 1 over 2 raised to nu by 2, gamma of nu by 2, x raised to nu by 2 minus 1, e raised to minus x by 2. Aap dekh rahe hain, ke sirf nu hi wo quantity hai, which is the unknown quantity and which is the one lone parameter of the chi-square distribution. Now, coming to the properties of the chi-square distribution, first and foremost, we can say that it is a continuous distribution ranging from 0 to infinity as is evident from its equation. And as far as the shape of the distribution is concerned, the parameter nu determines the shape. Nu is known as the degrees of freedom of the chi-square distribution and there is a different chi-square distribution for each number of degrees of freedom. As such, it is a whole family of distributions just as we had in the case of the T distribution or the normal distribution or for any other distribution. The curve of the chi-square distribution 
is positively skewed, but the skewness decreases as new increases. Students, ye jo point abhi maine aapko diya, iska matlab ye hua ke jaise jaise aap degrees of freedom badhate chale jaate hain, uski jo skewness hai that becomes less and it looks more and more like a normal distribution. The next property, as you now see on the slide, the diagram that you have in front of you now, in this we have drawn three chi-square distributions, one for two degrees of freedom, one having six degrees of freedom and one having 10 degrees of freedom. And you can see that whereas the chi-square distribution with two degrees of freedom is extremely skewed, the one having 10 degrees of freedom is much less skewed and looks much more like a normal distribution. The next property pertains to the mean of the chi-square distribution and it has been mathematically proved that the mean of the chi-square distribution is equal to nu, the number of degrees of freedom. As far as its variance is concerned, it is equal to 2 times nu. Iska matlab ye hua ke agar hum 10 degrees of freedom wali chi-square distribution ki baat kar rahe hain, to uski jo mean value hai, that is equal to 10. Or uska jo variance hai, that is equal to 2 times 10, that is 20. Yani agar hum iska square root le, square root of 20, how much is that? Is it um, 4 point something? Yes. Then the standard deviation, the spread of this distribution is square root of 20. The next property is also very interesting. As you now see on the slide, the moments about the origin for the chi-square distribution are as follows. Mu1 dash is equal to nu. Mu1 dash of course is the same thing as the mean because after all, do you not remember that the first moment about the origin, in other words, the first moment about 0 is exactly the same thing as the mean. Also, mu2 dash is equal to nu into nu plus 2, mu3 dash is equal to nu into nu plus 2 into nu plus 4, and mu4 dash is equal to nu into nu plus 2 into nu plus 4 into nu plus 6. Dekha aapne kis kadar khubsurat formula hai. It um, just goes on in a systematic pattern. But students, we are more interested in the moment ratios. And as you now see on the slide, the first moment ratio beta 1 comes out to be 8 over nu and the second one beta 2 comes out to be 3 plus 12 over nu. Students, aapko yaad hai, abhi thodi der pehle maine aap se kaha that as the degrees of freedom increase, the skewness of the chi-square distribution decreases and it becomes more and more like the normal distribution. Is baat ko in moment ratios ke saath relate ki jiye, jo abhi abhi aapke saamne present kiye gaye. Since beta 1 is equal to 8 over nu, isn't it obvious that if nu tends to infinity, beta 1 will tend to 0? And also, since beta 2 is equal to 3 plus 12 over nu, as nu tends to infinity, beta 2 will tend to 3 plus 0, and that is 3. And students, do you not remember that for the normal distribution, beta 1 is equal to 0 and beta 2 is equal to 3. Hence, what we said earlier regarding the shape of the chi-square distribution is validated by the moment ratios. Students, having discussed the basic properties of the chi-square distribution, let us now begin the discussion of its role in estimation and hypothesis testing. 
as I said earlier, we can do hypothesis testing or estimation regarding the variance of our population on the basis of the chi-square distribution. Let me explain this point with the help of an example. Suppose that an aptitude test has been devised in such a way that it carries a total of 20 marks and suppose that this test is administered on a large population of students and when the result comes out we find that the marks of the students are normally distributed. Now a random sample of size 8 is drawn from this normal population and the sample values are 9, 14, 10, 12 and so on. We are required to find the 90 percent confidence interval for the population variance sigma square representing the variability in the marks of the students. Students, aapne note kiya ke is waqt hum mu mein nahi balke sigma square mein interested hain. The variation in the marks of the students. Yani hum dekhna chahate hain ke unke jo IQs hain kya wo bahut zyada vary karte hain ya thoda vary karte hain. Let us have a look at the data once again. The marks of the students in our sample are 9, 14, 10, 12, 7, 13, 11 and 12. Aap dekh rahe hain that these marks are not all the same. Obviously, there is some variation. Ab agar hum subjectively baat kare, hum mein se kuch loog kahenge ke in mein zyada variation nahi hai. Some will say that there is quite a bit of variation. So, obviously, we need a proper mathematical way of doing it. And as you now see on the screen, if we are interested in constructing a 90 percent confidence interval for sigma square, it is given by summation x minus x bar whole square over chi square 0 0.05 at nu minus 1 summation x minus x bar whole square over chi square 0 0.05 n minus 1 degrees of freedom. This is the lower limit and the upper limit is summation x minus x bar whole square over chi square 0 0.95 n minus 1 degrees of freedom. The next slide shows what we mean by chi square 0 0.05 and chi square 0 0.95. The value chi square 0 0.95 indicates that value on the x axis. The area to the right of which is 95 percent of the total area under the chi square distribution. Similarly, the value chi square 0 0.05 is that point on the x axis. The area to the right of which is 5 percent of the total area. As indicated already, the degrees of freedom that we have to use are n minus 1 and in this problem that is 8 minus 1 and that is 7. Now, in order to find the values of chi-square, we will need to consult the chi-square table which you now see on the screen. The very first column indicates the degrees of freedom and the very top row indicates the areas that we would like to have to the right of our chi-square values. Hence, in this particular problem, if we want 90 percent confidence, then we will be looking against 7 degrees of freedom once we will be looking under 0 0.95 and we find the value to be 2.17 and the other time we will be looking under 0 0.05 so that we find that chi square is equal to 14.07. Substituting these values in the lower and upper limits, we obtain summation x minus x bar whole square over 14.07 as the lower limit and 
summation x minus x bar whole square over 2.17 as the upper limit. Ab sawal ye paida hota hai ke summation x minus x bar whole square ki value kya hai? That is very obvious. We have the data and we can find these values either directly or by the shortcut formula. So, as you now see on the slide, in this problem x bar is equal to 88 over 8 because the sum of the values is 88 and therefore x bar is equal to 11 and substituting this in the formula sum x minus x bar whole square we obtain 9 minus 11 whole square plus 14 minus 11 whole square plus so on so that the sum of the squares of the deviations of the values from their mean comes out to be 36. Substituting this number 36 in the lower and upper limits, we obtain 2.56 as the lower limit and 16.61 as the upper limit of our 90 percent confidence interval for sigma square. Students, we have found the 90 percent confidence interval for sigma square. The values are lower limit 2.56 and upper limit 16.61. Now this seems to be a bit wide, right? But is pe gaur kare ke agar hum sigma square ki vijaye sigma ki baat kare, yani standard deviation ki, to kya hume aisa karna chahiye ke jo limits humne abhi variance ke liye nikali hain, unka square root le le and that will give us the confidence interval for sigma. As you now see on the slide, if we do so, then the lower limit for sigma comes out to be 1.6 and the upper limit 4.1. And you can see that this of course is much narrower than what we had for the variance. But then do keep in mind that after all the variance was in square units whereas the standard deviation itself is in the original unit. Is tarah ka tariqa hum adopt kar liya karte hain kai dafa ke bunyadi formula to sigma square ke liye hai but later we may take the square root and we can then regard it as a confidence interval for sigma. Students, Sara problem to hal ho gaya, humne solve kar liya, lekin sawaal ye hai ke how did we achieve this particular formula? Well, it has a derivation similar to the derivation that I conveyed to you for the confidence interval for mu based on the z statistic. But I will not be doing the detailed derivation of this particular formula in this course. All I would like you to note is that the basic requirement for this formula to be valid is that the population from which the sample is drawn, that population should be normally distributed. All right, having done interval estimation regarding sigma square, let us now proceed to hypothesis testing regarding the variance of the population. Let me explain this with the help of an example. As you now see on the slide, the variability in the tensile strength of a type of steel wire must be controlled carefully. A sample of the wire is subjected to test and it is found that the sample variance is 31.5. The sample size was n equal to 16 observations. Test the hypothesis that the population variance is 25 against the alternative that the variance is greater than 25. Use a 5 percent level of significance. Students, aap agree karenge ke kisi bhi production process mein hum chahte hain ke 
جو اسپیسیفکیشنز ہیں پروڈکٹ اس کے مطابق ہو اور ویریبلٹی جو ہے نا دیٹ از واٹ وی وانٹ ٹو کنٹرول اینڈ دیٹ از ایگزیکٹلی واٹ وی ہیو ان دس پرٹیکولر پرابلم سو وی وانٹ دیٹ دا ویریبلٹی شوڈ ناٹ بی گریٹر دین ٹوینٹی فائیو ان ٹرمس آف دا ویرینس آف دا ٹین سائل اسٹرینتھ ناؤ ہاؤ ڈو وی سالو دس پرابلم ایز یو سی آن دا سلائڈ دا نل ہیپوتھس از ایز دیٹ سگما اسکوائر از ایکول ٹو ٹوینٹی فائیو ویر ایز دی آلٹرنیٹو ایز دیٹ سگما اسکوائر از گریٹر دین ٹوینٹی فائیو دا لیول آف سگنیفیکنس از فائیو پرسینٹ اینڈ اسٹوڈنٹس دا ٹیسٹ اسٹیٹسٹک ان دس پرٹیکولر سچویشن از سمیشن ایکس مائنس ایکس بار ہول اسکوائر over sigma square which under h naught has a chi square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom assuming that the population is normal in order to calculate the value of chi square we note that summation x minus x bar whole square is equal to n times s square and substituting these values in the formula and substituting 25 instead of sigma square we obtain chi square is equal to 20.16 the next step is the critical region and since this is a right tail test students therefore we will look against 16 minus 1 that is 15 degrees of freedom under 0.05 and doing so we obtain the critical value as 25.00 since our computed value 20.16 is less than 25 therefore we accept the null hypothesis and we do not find evidence to conclude that the variability in the tensile strength is greater than 25 students in today's lecture we discussed the difference between means in the case of paired observations and after that we began the discussion of the chi square distribution i would like to encourage you to study these concepts in detail and until next time allah hafiz